Welcome back, Giants fans. As I said last Giants video, we're going to do a video talking about some day two potential picks for the Giants here. The draft is in like, I don't know, nine days, 10 days. I think it's the 27th. I mean, we're getting there. So very close. Um, I'll probably do one more video after this leading up to the draft. I might do like a questions type video. So look out for the community page and on Twitter for that. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave in the comments which day two prospects are you looking into? Which ones do you want? Which ones do you not want? Hope you guys enjoyed the video and let's get into it. Number one, and this is in no particular order, by the way. This just happens to be the way I watched them or the order I watched them. Number one is A.T. Perry, wide receiver out of Wake Forest. Now, he's a guy who has size. He is 6'5". He can play physical. And I did watch an interview with him, and he said some good things. He said he takes stretching very seriously. That's why he looks so flexible on tape, um, especially for a 6'5 guy. He said he watched a lot of Alshon Jeffrey growing up. And, of course, Alshon had a very good NFL career. He did help the Eagles win a Super Bowl in 2017. He wants to be a perfectionist, and he does not want to be labeled as just a big receiver. He wants to be a big receiver that can also do the same things that a small wide receiver does. He's a football nerd. He studies the game a lot, and he's had back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons and over 10 touchdowns in each year for Wake Forest. So he does have good production. He has the right mindset. I mean, there are concerns to his game, hence the reason he might be a late second-round pick, early third-round pick. There are concerns about his drop rate. He had a 10.4% career drop rate. He doesn't run the best routes at times. And he's not the most muscular receiver, kind of has a slender build. But on the flip side, he has a very wide catch radius, a 6'10 wingspan. He plays the ball in the air very well, and he has some pretty good speed. So yeah, A.T. Perry is interesting. I feel like he's a pretty, you know, boomer bust type prospect, but I don't know what the Giants want to do because we know that Joe Shane does prefer separators, but you look at the Giants receiving room and it's all guys that are pretty small. So do the Giants want to get one, at least one big receiver? And this, of course, would be a bigger receiver at 6'5". So maybe... A.T. Perry's on their board and they're interested or maybe they're not interested at all. Next, we have an inside linebacker, Dayon Henley out of Washington State, listed at 6'2", 225. He's an interesting case because he played a wide receiver up until like a few years ago. I do think from 2018 to 2020, he was playing a wide receiver, then transferred to Washington State this past year, had a good season, over 100 tackles, playing in the Pac-12. And in the past two years, he's had four sacks and five interceptions. He's definitely put up some good production. He is 6'2", 225, sure tackler, very low missed tackle rate last year. He's twitchy, he's a great athlete, and I'm sure like having good hips and still playing like a wide receiver can definitely transfer in a positive way to playing linebacker. He has that size of 6'2", 225 once again. So that stuff's going to help out. He's relatively new to the position, so there is room to grow here. I definitely find that intriguing. Now, the downside is he is 23 years old. You're looking for guys a bit younger, but still a 23 is not too bad, obviously. Um, and he also has some problems with play recognition. But once again, it's relatively a new position, so I'm sure he'll figure that stuff out. So, yeah. The Giants, of course, can use some more inside linebackers. Of course, the Bobby Okereke signing helped out a lot, but I would not mind taking a shot on uh, Henley. Definitely an interesting guy who can hopefully grow into a better linebacker as he becomes more experienced. Next, we have tight end Sam Laporta out of Iowa. And, of course, Iowa tight ends are interesting. We know about George Kittle and TJ Hawkinson in recent years being very productive. The last two years, he's had pretty good stats. Now, he is 6'4", 249, so that's very good size for NFL standards. And the past two years, he's had over 50 catches and over 650 yards in back-to-back -back years. He's only had five career touchdowns in four years. That's kind of weird. I mean, I don't know if it's, there's any correlation there, but he definitely has size to be a very good red zone option. And he is a really good receiver, so I don't know why that happened, but maybe that's just bad luck. I don't know. Anyway... He ran a 4.59 at the combine. That's very good for a 245 pound tight end. He's good with the ball in his hands, has that yards after catch ability. He can break tackles. He's made some nice catches up the seam. He can be a threat there. He does need to be a bit more deceiving in his route running and needs to put on more strength as a blocker, but he is built like an NFL tight end, and I like his game. So I think he's moving in the right direction. He's been improving year to year, and I know the Giants have Darren Waller, who hopefully is good for another two or three years, but 
He is going to be 31 next year, so the Giants have to look for maybe some type of future option at tight end aside from Daniel Bellinger. So if Sam Laporte is on their radar, it wouldn't shock me. And if the Giants were to take a tight end on day two, I don't think I'd hate it. Next, we have wide receiver Nathaniel Dell or Tank Dell. And he's a guy who only weighs 165 pounds. He is 5'10", but do teams want to draft a guy who's 165 that high? I mean, I don't see him being a first-round pick, but he's put up very impressive numbers. Like, he had, I think, 29 touchdowns the past two years combined. He's had back-to-back seasons over 1,300 yards at Houston. He's very good, and I, I liked what I saw on tape. He plays the ball very well in the air, great deep ball catcher. He's a pretty good separator. He can accelerate very well, and he played both inside and outside. So if Devontae Smith was able to go in the first round top 10, or it might have been 11, I forget where he went. I think it was top 10. But for him to go that high, I mean, maybe Nathaniel Dell goes kind of high as well. I mean, I once again don't see it being in the first round, but he definitely has enough production to be like, hey, like that guy proved he can do it in college. I think he could be a pretty good NFL player. But once again, how risk adverse will these teams be early in the draft? And do the Giants want to go in that direction with a very you know, slim receiver. He does fit their mold of being a guy who can separate, and I do think he's very good downfield, and he'd be more intriguing if Darius Slayton left, because I think he could do some of those things that Slayton does, but even with Slayton back, I still think there's a chance here, and the Giants definitely need some height and guys that can make plays on the outside. I know he's only 5'10", but still, it's better than the 5'7", 5'8", guys that are only slot guys. Nathaniel Dell can play both, so maybe he's an option there for the Giants in round two or three. Next, we have Tyreek Stevenson, the corner out of Miami. He was in Georgia his first two years. He transferred in 2021 to Miami. He's played very well the past couple of years. I think he's going to be a second or third round pick most likely. You might even see him go in the uh, early second round. Six feet tall, 214. He's your prototypical outside corner, and... He could be a bit better out of his breaks. He's not like a terrific athlete, so he may have to cheat a bit to you know, break on the ball and get some interceptions and pass breakups at the next level, but he does have a high floor. He's good in man coverage, which of course is what the Giants defense is going to be more tailored towards. He allowed a 47 completion percentage in 2021 and had two interceptions with 25 tackles in 11 games last year. So the production's there, and obviously based on him not being a very high-end athlete, he probably won't go in the first round, but he could be a safe outside corner. And if you put him out, you know, opposite of a guy like a uh, a Dory Jackson, that might be a good move. So the Giants, who should be looking for another outside corner, might be looking at a Tyreek Stevenson there in round two. Next, we have Steve Avila, the interior offensive lineman out of TCU, 6'3", 332. He has center and guard experience. That's definitely big. He allowed 11 pressures on 540 pass blocking snaps in this past season alone, so that's very impressive. He's a good pass protector, has a very good anchor. It's tough to move him. Now, the knock on him is that he can improve with his angles in the run game, so that's like the one bad thing about him is taking better angles in the run game, but he is quick off the line. He played left guard last year, but the previous two seasons, he played center, and he allowed no sacks in over 1,000 snaps last year, so he does have the production to show for it. And the Giants, who definitely need help at not just center, but even left guard and maybe even right guard if Glowinski falls off even more, a guy like Steve Avila that can play all three positions is very interesting. Next, we have center Luke Whipler out of Ohio State, 6'3", 303, which is a bit smaller for a center. He's probably a center-only type prospect. He's from Montvale, New Jersey. Pretty fun fact there. I don't know where I saw that, but I saw it. Um, he plays with great leverage. He can improve on his anchor because, you know, that being 303, it's tough to be, you know, that great at holding your ground. And it's it's understandable, but he does make up for it for being very good out in space, especially in the run game. But on the flip side, he's not even 22 years old yet, so he still has time to grow. He does have great technique, strong hands. He does have short arms at 31 inches. He allowed one sack and 449 pass blocking snaps in 2022. He has started at center the past two years for Ohio State and has allowed one career sack. So is he a sure thing? I mean, really nobody is, but he definitely has a pretty high floor. 
The only concern I have is his strength at the next level. Aside from that, Luke Whipler should be a pretty solid pro. Next is cornerback Julius Brents out of Kansas State. He has a massive wingspan listed at 6'3", 198. He is already 23 years old, so as I said, it's a bit older than you'd like, but it's not terrible or anything. It's not Hendon Hooker, which... We'll get to him later. Um, he has really good burst for a big guy. Had four interceptions and three pass breakups in 2022. He did run a 4-5-3-40, but tested excellent elsewhere. And having a 4-5-3-40 for a, you know, a bigger corner is it, not the end of the world. I think Richard Sherman had a pretty high 40. Um, I think Casey Hayward did. I'm pretty sure Josh Norman did. It, it's definitely not a nail in the coffin. So, you know, guys have had not the best 40s as corners, and they've had very good careers. He is expected to be better as a zone corner, so maybe not the best scheme fit. And he does have four passes defended and one forced fumble last season. So as I said, maybe not the best scheme fit, but if the Giants do think he can play man-to-man -man consistently then maybe Julius Brents is a guy to take a look at. Next is running back Zach Charbonnet. Sounds like a fancy drink. Out of UCLA, 6 feet tall, 214. He's elusive. He's tough to bring down. He fights for every yard. He has, you know, a bell cow type body type. He averaged around 20 touches per game in college. Respectable receiver. And he kind of reminded me of James Conner. I don't know what it was. It was like something about him reminded me of James Conner. He lacks elite breakaway speed, but did handle a large workload once again. Had over 1,100 rushing yards in back-to-back -back years with 27 rushing touchdowns the past two years. Also had over 300 receiving yards last year. So he's a very solid running back all around. And I would say as a backup to Saquon Barkley, that'd be a very good you know pick. I, I think he's he could be a three-down back one day, assuming Saquon either has played his last game as a giant or maybe next year might be his last year i think charbonnet could be like a good backup plan for the future and i do think he'll have a pretty good nfl career so i would not mind that pick at all i'd prefer for a running back to be in round three but a team might like him a lot and maybe he goes in round two next we have andre carter the second edge player out of army 66 256 he kind of reminds me of uh, the build that, I actually had to look up his name because I forgot who he was, Ellerson Smith. It kind of reminds me of Ellerson Smith's build, just one of those edge guys who has a lot of traits and tools and has the size, and that's kind of what Andre Carter feels like. So in 2021, he had 59 pressures, which is awesome. Then in 2022, he was double teamed a lot, and his numbers were not as good. He's a very unique athlete. He has Good pass rushing upside, a good pass rushing plan. Probably a 3-4 outside linebacker if I had to guess, but he could get a bit stronger. He is agile. He has length. He had 14 and a half sacks in that 2021 season, but dropped to three and a half sacks last year. So once again, sacks for or um, you know his stats for him don't tell the entire story. He was double teamed a lot, so I don't know what type of player he'll be. Maybe he'll be an Ellerson Smith type guy and not really make too much of an impact, although he's still young himself. But a player like him, I mean, it's interesting. It depends how much upside the Giants want to take a shot on. But I do feel like there's a few teams out there that might like Andre Carter a lot. Next, we have defensive lineman, probably more of a nose tackle, Siaki Ika. I've heard Ika. I think it's Ika. I don't know. You guys can correct me in the comments. But he's out of Baylor. 6'4", 358, had 33 pressures in the 2021 season. But last year was a bit inconsistent, so it was a bit of a down year. Does have amazing lower body strength. Maybe does need to cut some weight. We'll see what teams want him to do at the next level. And that, of course, is to play all three downs. He's definitely a great run stuffer right now, but to be a pass rusher, he may have to drop some weight. We'll see what they decide to do. Anyway, his first step, his explosiveness, is really good for that size. Great leverage. He has some pass rushing ability. Probably a round three guy, but I think that's very good value for him. He had three and a half sacks in 2021, but none last year. So as I said, a bit of a down year, but hopefully he can bounce back. He's a guy that if he's in round three, I would not be opposed to that. I think the Giants, of course, can use some more interior defensive line help. It's not a must, but I do you know, prefer some depth in that spot, and I do like Ika as a prospect, so I would kind of like that pick for round three. Next, we have three safeties I'll go over here. First one is Antonio Johnson out of Texas A&M, 6'2", 198, still just 21 years old. He is really good around the line of scrimmage. He can close out on the ball very quickly with ease. He can be a box slash slot guy, but does need to be better at making plays on the ball. He does have a 6'2 frame, which I like. He can stop the run very well for his size. 
gets through blocks easily, had over 70 tackles in back-to-back -back years and four forced fumbles during that time. So good production there for Antonio Johnson. Another safety, Jordan Battle out of Alabama, 6'1", 209. Not a freak athlete, but really solid at everything. He has played a ton the past three years, always in the right position, has played box and slot, good frame, good hips and change of direction. His range is decent, not the best burst, but he did have 85 tackles and three interceptions in 2021, but still had over 70 tackles and an interception last year. Another safety, Jamie Robinson out of Florida State, 5'11", 191. Arguably the most complete safety in this class, played everywhere in the secondary. He brings quickness and tremendous tackling ability. Could be a bit bigger and stronger. Once again, 5'11", 191, not the biggest guy out there. Probably the best in like a too high safety look. He's light on his feet, has played a ton of college snaps. He's had over 60 tackles in all four years. He's been getting better every year. He had 99 tackles last year, four interceptions in 2021, and seven for his career. Also had 15 tackles for loss. So yeah, he's been very productive. And I do think a guy like Jamie Robinson, assuming there's no concerns about his his weight and holding him back, I do think that'd be a very good pick for the Giants. And I just want somebody who can play aside um, Xavier McKinney. We know about Julian Love leaving, another safety the, uh, the Giants had last year. Which guy would be the best fit next to McKinney? If they think Jamie Robinson has the height to play strong safety, maybe that's your guy. But if not, I think Jordan Battle is a safe bet. Jordan Battle, as I said, is not an elite athlete. Julian Love is not an elite athlete either. But I think Jordan Battle can be a very good guy to fit in as like a round three pick to uh, replace Julian Love's spot. Next, we have some wide receivers to go over here. First is Michael Wilson out of Stanford, a very interesting case. A lengthy injury history, but without that, he's probably a top five wide receiver in this class. He's 6'2", 213. He played hurt in 2022 with an ankle injury, so his numbers were not that great. His tape wasn't that great, but in 2021, he was a stud. He's a possession receiver. He runs good routes. He makes contested catches with ease. He put up 418 yards and four touchdowns in six games last year. So when he plays, he's very good. But that's a big if. And the Giants, of course, are a team that, you know, does not really do too well with injury luck. So that might not be the type of guy they want. If whoever drafts Michael Wilson, you know, if he stays healthy for that team, it's going to be a really good value pick. Next is wide receiver Rasheed Rice out of SMU. 6'1", 204, great body control. He wins contested catches. He is good at for the catch. I think he has a high floor. Good ball skills. More of a possession receiver just like Wilson. Could have better long speed and doesn't beat press coverage very easily. He did have 1,355 yards last year on 96 grabs and 10 touchdowns. So very impressive stats there for Rasheed Rice. He has been called an inconsistent route runner and sometimes lazy when he's not expecting the ball. So he has to run his routes at 100%. Next is wide receiver Jalen Hyatt out of Tennessee. Six feet tall, 176. He's an elite field stretcher. But once again, only 176. He's another guy who needs to be better versus press man. He is shorthanded. Great 2022 stats. Not an easy projection when talking about his future role in the NFL. But he did have over 1,200 yards and 15 touchdowns last season. So is he slot only? Is he just an outside guy that goes deep and runs post routes? I don't know. I don't know how teams are going to use him. Doesn't seem like a great scheme fit for the Giants. But maybe for another team, it might work out very well. Next, we have wide receiver Cedric Tillman, also out of Tennessee, 6'3", 213, most physical receiver in the class, arguably, reliable possession receiver, needs an expanded route tree. That's probably the biggest thing about him is not running every route. He high points the ball perfectly, I will say. His catch radius is big. He is a bit overly reliant on his physical tools, and I don't know if that's going to work out in the NFL. It did work out very well for Mike Evans, but these are different prospects. Um, needs to be better at coming out of his breaks. He's sometimes a bit, you know, a bit slow out of his breaks. He did have 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns back in 2021, but only played in six games in 2022. So as I said about A.T. Perry in the beginning of this video, do the Giants want to get a bigger receiver and change things up, or do they want to keep going small? Because if they want to keep going small then Cedric Tillman's probably not a fit for their team. All right, we have like a handful of guys left, so we'll try to get through them quickly here. 
Tight end Darnell Washington out of Georgia, 6'6", 264, a very impressive frame, obviously. He's more of an inline tight end, of course. Good burst and speed for that size, but not the best route runner yet. I don't know if he will fix that, but if he is better at that, he might be a very good tight end one day. Lots of run blocking potential, but needs to get better with his leverage. Did have a career high 454 receiving yards and two touchdowns last year. Linebacker Trenton Simpson, who I know some Giants fans were talking about in the first round. It seems like his stock has fallen recently. I don't know what it was. Maybe not the best combine, but 6'2", 235. So maybe slightly undersized, but I feel like for tight end or for linebackers nowadays, that's like a pretty normal size. He's rangy. He's a smooth athlete, probably a weak side linebacker for sure, but he will be known for his coverage. He does have some late breaks to the ball in zone. Only one year as a starter, no career interceptions and only two pass breakups. So his play on the ball has to be a lot better. He can excel as a blitzer in the right scheme. Of course, the Giants may be looking for that and has over 65 tackles in back-to-back -back years with 13 career sacks. Next is another linebacker, Dorian Williams out of Tulane, 6'1", 228. Big wingspan, is known for his coverage ability and has great awareness in doing so. Probably another weak side linebacker, could improve with play strength and taking on blocks. QBs have had a 67 passer rating in his direction. He was considered a combine winner, had 132 tackles last season with five sacks and two interceptions for Tulane. I think Dorian Williams is very interesting. Like if, if there's one, one of these inside linebackers, aside from the first one we talked about, which was Dayon Henley, I think that a guy like Dorian Williams would be a very fun pick. I don't know if it's going to work out, but like you watch him on film and it's like, holy crap, like he's a lot better than the guys he's playing against and he's just a different type of athlete. So I don't know if it was the competition or what, but Dorian Williams, I feel like has a lot of upside and I do love picks like that. Next is running back Dwayne McBride out of UAB, 5'10", 209. This guy had dominant video game type numbers, 7.2 yards per attempt. He does have a fumbling issue. He's an average receiver at best, but he has really good footwork. He can fit through tight spaces. Probably a two down back right now, kind of like a CJ Anderson type guy. He reminded me of even Damian Harris with the Patriots, or now he's on the Bills now. But breakaway speed is not impressive. Did play lower competition. Um, had 1,300 rushing yards in 2021, but had 1,700 rushing yards last year with 32 touchdowns the past two years. And once again, not the best pass catcher. But Dwayne McBride, if the, if the Giants were to miss out on a Zach Charbonnet, Dwayne McBride's probably that next guy that I would want. Another safety, Jartavius Martin out of Illinois, 5'11", 194. He's going to be a great special team player at minimum. He's the type of guy that if you get him in round four, round five, I think that's an excellent pick. He can play slot corner. He's a plus run defender. 15 forced incompletions last year. Breaks to the ball very well. He's a reliable tackler. Does need some work in man coverage. Sometimes gets fooled on play actions and definitely needs more patience. Three interceptions and 64 tackles last season. But once again, very good special teams player at minimum. I don't mind taking those guys in the middle of the draft. This one I saw today from PFF. It was Mike Renner. I do like Mike Renner's work over there. Um, he had Ivan Pace Jr. out of Cincinnati, a linebacker, as a really good day three pick for the Giants. He's arguably the best blitzing linebacker in this class, so he'd be a very good scheme fit with the Giants. I know the Giants took some late round um, uh, linebackers last year. Mike and McFadden, Darian Beavers. Beavers did not play last year. McFadden played a bit. Now, Mike Renner did say that if he did have more size, he might be a first round pick. He is only 5'10. So if he had more size, he might have been a first round pick. That's what he thinks about him. Sideline the sideline skills. Lateral agility, smaller wingspan, of course, and he needs to play downhill. That's probably the biggest thing about him. He needs to play downhill, needs to get momentum. But as I said, he is a good blitzer, probably not the most reliable in coverage right away, but there is some potential there and possibly a good scheme fit for the Giants for Ivan Pace Jr. out of Cincinnati. And last but not least, quarterback Hendon Hooker out of Tennessee. There was news today about the Giants bringing in Hendon Hooker for a visit. I think that might have been his second visit, but... It's his first at minimum, so he's 6'3", 217. I think he has a good all-around game. He has an NFL-caliber arm. He's a pretty good runner. Teams have to account for him as a runner, at least. 
He has the physical traits that teams do desire. He is 25 already and just tore his ACL. So that, of course, is the bad news about him. Does have a gorgeous deep ball. He has steadily improved every year. Probably needs a good structure to be a decent quarterback in the NFL, but can be a league average quarterback. I don't see why not. Does have a 58 to 5 touchdown to interception ratio the past two years. Hendon Hooker, despite the age and some other things, the ACL, there is a lot to like. Now, do I think it makes sense for the Giants in round two after signing Daniel Jones for a minimum of two years and probably three years? I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I think Hendon Hooker might be decent with the right team, and I think Brian Dable can make just about any quarterback look great, but I don't think Hendon Hooker makes a lot of sense for the Giants in round two. I, I would prefer them to go elsewhere and try to build a team and look for, you know, a wide receiver, a linebacker, an interior offensive lineman. Like, if Hendon Hooker falls that far in the draft and they think he's going to be good, then yeah, I don't mind it. Like he he's definitely more of a sure thing than like a Malik Willis was or someone like that. Like he definitely has more easy to project type prospect than a Malik Willis was. So yeah, maybe it's Hendon Hooker in round two. Hell, maybe in round one. I, it'd be crazy, but I just you can't predict the draft. I, I we've seen crazier stuff. Um, but yeah, I would not expect that. But maybe round two. I don't know. But anyway, that's gonna do it. We went, we went over a bunch of prospects here, so. Let me know somebody I forgot. If you like any of these guys, let me know in the comments. And once again, if you have questions for my next questions video, you can leave them in the comments. If not, I will post it on Twitter and probably my uh, community page in the coming days. So we'll do one more video for the Giants before the draft. Hope you guys stay tuned for that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you guys next time.